I actually had thought about serving my country since pro approximately the third grade. Every book that I read, every advertisement, recruiting advertisement that I read, it just seemed like a wow moment. You know, I want to do this. I want to serve my country. It just looked like a lot of courage and honor and dignity and character, and it was everything that I was about. The military is a very tight, uh, knit brother and sisterhood, and you get to meet people from diverse backgrounds. And I had become good friends with a high-ranking NCO. He was a married man, older, and uh, I enjoyed his company because I felt safe. He was like a father figure. We were having a beach bonfire, I call it, on the Mediterranean, and he, I, he, I had invited him. And I had duty the next day, so I had to cut my night short. And he, being a gentleman, offered to walk me down a dark alley to my apartment, and of course I accepted. Once we got to my apartment, he asked me if um, he could sleep on the couch, which he had done numerous times, and I would take him to base back to base with me the next day. I went and put pajamas and a robe on, came back down the hall to uh, make sure that he had enough blankets because it was a little, getting a little chilly. And uh, he pulled me close initially to, to kiss me, and I think I was more shocked than afraid. And he actually apologized instantly when I pushed him away. He said, oh my God, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. And as I turned to go to bed, he uh, grabbed me by my robe and tore it off and um, punched me. And he drug me um, down the hall to, um, the, the, to the restroom, which was actually being remodeled. And um, that's where he uh, beat me more and uh, raped me. Um, he uh, took out his service knife and cut me in several places. He pulled my fingernails off with the pliers and uh, pulled my teeth with pliers, uh, poured a uh, paint thinner that was in the bathroom into my vagina, into my cuts that he had. He uh, took off his belt before he left and um, beat me with that. And he said, you'll, you'll be dead in a few minutes, have a... He said, uh, thank you, I've been waiting for this opportunity. I woke up in a, a puddle of blood in the, actually in the bathtub, and my mouth was completely swollen, and my fingers were bleeding from my fingernails being taken off, and I realized that I had duty. And in the military, if you don't report for duty, you're considered AWOL. So I thought that if I could get myself to base, I could get medical help. And I also wanted to report the crime. And when I got to the duty hut, I was yelled at because I'd actually wore the wrong uniform. I wore long sleeves because I was ashamed of all the bruises and cuts. And my duty officer said he was going to write me up. And I told him what happened, and he said, really? He said, it looks like you had a rough roll in the hay. I went to the second in command. He just said that I was a slut and um, that females had no business in his unit. And I tried to explain to him about my wounds, physical wounds, and the blood in my vagina and what ran down my legs. And he told me, perhaps you'll just call it a bad period. I also told the commander of the base the next morning and was told that I had a strong chance of spending the rest of my life in a military prison for reporting this rape. So he told me that uh, he was going to do me a favor and give me what's called a medical chit and let me go home for three days and rest. Back, back to my apartment, back to the scene of the crime, I called it. I couldn't sleep a week there. I couldn't use the restroom there. I couldn't shower there or bathe. 
Um, and I thought that he would come back and finish killing me. So I tried to uh, commit suicide while I was there. I went back to base after three days and I also had to work with him. And he um, put the fear of God in me, I should say. I, I assumed he would kill me. So I went to the chaplain's office and told him of the situation and he stepped out of the room, excused himself, and the next thing, I, a two shore patrol came in with handcuffs and read me my, read me my, my rights, told me I was under arrest for um, illegally reporting a crime against another service member and for being suicidal because if you're in the military, you're military uh, equipment. You're not just an individual. I was moved back to Andrews Air Force Base and put on a mental ward. They did some blood work because of the psychotic medication they were giving me, and they told me that I was pregnant. They said that the baby was too much evidence of the rape. And they told me that I had to pay for it myself to have an abortion. And I had the abortion to keep my job. And I was promised that I would get another duty station. I'd done everything they asked me to do. They told me that if I told them that I was just an alcoholic and would go to their six week alcohol program, I could stay. So I agreed. A Marine Colonel that was in charge of the program said, I don't believe that you're an alcoholic. He said, what I'm gonna do is give you a full medical check to return to duty your, your fit. I took it to my psychiatrist and it pissed her off. So she ripped it up, said she had done everything in her power to cover up the rape and to keep me in the military as I wanted to be and that I had just bought myself a ticket home. She said, I'm gonna do you a favor though and give you an honorable discharge and write borderline personality disorder on it so you can't re-enlist. I graduated first in every class. I don't know why they don't wanna keep me. And I wanted to stay. It's not like I said, let me out. I mean, I, I worked so hard. I honestly thought that if I begged enough, I could stay. I really didn't have anywhere to go. I mean, I think the fallout from the lack of support was as bad as the rape, if not worse. Fifteen years after my discharge, I um, finally had a plan in place to go ahead and, and commit suicide, but I wanted to do it um, very publicly, and I wanted to do it in a government setting. So I walked into the St. Louis um, VA Medical Center, and I actually literally bumped into a staff member. He asked me if I would uh, go to his office with him and, and just talk to him. And he told me within five minutes, perhaps, he said, you know you have PTSD? I didn't know what it was. He told me what it was, and he asked me if I'd come back and see him again the following week. He was, like I said, he was there from the get-go, and he's still there with me. And I wouldn't be here today, and I'm certain of it, without this one individual. So, of all the bad, uh, there's sometimes light at the end of the tunnel, they say. He's my light. He's been my light, you know.